In contemporary times, quantitative easing, or QE as it is called, has come to signify a kind of unconventional monetary policy. Uh, conventional monetary policy is when the central bank buys and sells government securities in order to control the money supply, with the banking system usually being the counterparty in such transactions. Quantitative easing, however, refers to a different kind of monetary policy where the central bank uh, purchases toxic assets from the banking system and injects reserves into the banking systems in exchange for those toxic assets. The hope is that the central bank will be able to relieve the banking system of bad assets that are threatening the banking system with insolvency and that banks will subsequently lend out the reserves that have been injected into the system in order to revive an economy that is suffering from a credit squeeze. In practice, however, this kind of quantitative easing has not really delivered on its promise because the banking system has typically sat on the excess reserves and not lent them out. This, however, does not vitiate uh, the effectiveness of quantitative easing because quantitative easing in its strict sense refers to a much more broad-based process of credit creation. This was how QE was envisioned by economist Richard Werner who came up with the phrase in 1995 when he was studying the Japanese economy. In Werner's uh, uh, approach quantitative easing refers also to a central bank conducting open market operations with the non-banking financial sector. It also involves the central bank buying in addition to the toxic assets from the banking system other kinds of assets like corporate bonds, equities, foreign exchange and even real estate. And finally Quantitative easing, according to Werner, also might involve the central bank printing new cash and delivering it directly into the hands of private citizens, that is taxpayers. Now, this form of quantitative easing, or what is called true quantitative easing or true QE, will explicitly target nominal GDP rather than an interest rate or a monetary aggregate or even inflation. And the idea is that the central bank will announce a nominal GDP target and then make available whatever credit is necessary in order to achieve that target. So true quantitative easing is perhaps the only solution for the Japanese economy today. The Japanese economy has been stagnating for the last two decades despite several attempts by the Bank of Japan to revive the economy. But then what the Bank of Japan has typically done is that it has targeted interest rates or reserves or some kind of monetary aggregate, but it has not performed true quantitative easing.